Here's the problem. Most real estate agents and business owners in general, guess what they're doing? They're trying to make out with the girl on the front porch before they even take her to dinner. You guys, you got to stop. <laughs> That's a golden that nugget, ladies and gentlemen, right there. That's a freaking golden nugget. <laughs> From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Luke. Here we go. Here's another episode of Stay Paid. We've had a busy day today, man. This has been... And I can tell by your voice. Since about 9.30 on. You've lost a little bit of your voice. I have. Yeah, I woke up yesterday with a frog in my throat. The frog came back this morning. Yes. We had a we had a conference this morning at like 9.30. Yeah. Then we, you had another webinar. Now, I went from pitching in a virtual booth, which I'm still trying to figure out how to do. So if any of the audience has tips on how to do a virtual conference, <laughs> like I consider it's myself... It's so to hard be, for you because you're, especially one-on-one at the conferences... I'm like a chameleon. Yeah. Well, it's the context, like walking someone through a story versus people jumping in and just checking yeah. it out. It's like, well, I don't know what you've heard so far. What do I say? I'm so much better face to face. I consider myself to be pretty good at booth type sales, mm-hmm. like pulling people in, being the chameleon, adapting to the environment, hearing what the messaging is at the event, applying it to how we can help, all that type of stuff. Virtually, man, you get no feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so you're literally just stone cold right there. And then I jump straight to another webinar and it's just been one thing after another, but it's fantastic. I'm excited about this interview. Yeah. This is someone we've been looking this forward to. Looking and for, so for take out your pen yes. and paper. You're going to get a bunch of golden nuggets on this Yes. One. Speaking of which, our guest today, his name is Michael Hellickson. He is the founder and president of Club Wealth Coaching and Consulting. What makes Michael's firm so unique? And we absolutely love it whenever we saw this description. Every single one of his coaches has sold more real estate than the agents and the brokers that they coach. They're also the only real estate coaching company that offers a double your income money back guarantee at the pinnacle of Michael's sales career. Him and his team were number one nationwide out of over 1 million real estate agents and teams. Since then, Michael has spoken to thousands of agents and organizations nationwide and has been featured on programs including Glenn Beck, CNBC, The Dave Ramsey Show, and Fox Business Network. Michael, thanks so much for joining us here on Stay Paid and welcome. I appreciate you having me. This is exciting. What an honor it is to be on. I mean, geez, you guys are you guys are rapidly becoming the number one podcast on uh, <laughs> that's if I remember right. It, I mean, what a, that's a big deal, man. Your, your I mean, check like, is I in the mail, Michael. Here. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> I, I love this guy. No, I I am so happy to have you on. You have been someone we've been following uh, for a long time. I love your value proposition because I I think one of the hardest things for Josh and I, because we run a marketing company and so we service, you know, we worked with 30 plus thousand real estate agents alone last year. And it's hard because we're marketers. We're not necessarily practitioners of the real estate business. And so we try to apply the marketing principles and all those things. And I love getting next to real practitioners and the fact that your value proposition has been, hey, you're not going to get a coach that hasn't done what you're hoping to do. I think that man is freaking phenomenal. Um, I would love for you to tell just a little bit of your journey, right? You have such a huge story, but if you could give the audience that maybe has never heard about you, just the quick 30,000 foot view of what led you to where you're at today. Well, it's super fast. I mean, I just, I, I let's, let's start with, yes, I've, I've, my, my, primarily my experience has been in the real estate industry. I'll, although I did do a, a little bit of a stint uh, for about three and a half years, I flipped a bunch of businesses and, and uh, that was fun. That was actually pretty interesting. And so, uh, to your point, all of our coaches, whether they're in real estate or outside of real estate, they're they're running businesses that are larger than the people they're coaching. For me, I sold real estate for about uh, just over twenty years. Um, you know, typical real estate agent will, will sell a house. Uh, it, actually, I think the average is a house every four and a half months. Mm. Um, and so it's it's very small amount of homes. I was uh, with my team of sixteen agents. We were doing. Uh, 120 to 180 transactions a month. And uh, we had uh, 750 listings in active and pending status oh at one point, gosh. which is a lot. Yeah, that's, a lot. A, dude, that's like 10 years worth of an average age, 20 years worth of an average age. <laughs> More, even more than that, actually. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. Oh <laughs> it's kind of crazy when you think about it's it. It's nuts. Know? 
I, we got to talk on this scale. podcast on how you control that scale mm. because uh, the hamster wheel is what kills people. But I want you to finish your story. But I want oh, to get. I love to that. where your head's at, though. I love where you're going with that because you know people people talk about cliche about about scale, and it's they talk about it in such a cliche way. I don't think most of them really understand what it means to scale. Right. Right. Grow and scale are two very different things, and yeah. most people don't understand the difference. And, and you guys clearly do. So I'm glad we're going to have that conversation. Uh, you know, for us. Uh, it, it, without going into a lot of detail, there's actually a, as I know we're, we're in the interest of time, we don't have time to go into too much detail on it, but um, you should go to our website, take a look at the, wh- how I got to where I'm at now. I, I, I got out of selling real estate because I picked the wrong fight, essentially. Hmm. Um, I caught our, I caught our state breaking the law and I, I'll tell you, here's a lesson, write this down. Everybody that's got a pen, write this down. You can be right or you could be rich. Pick one. Okay. Like I learned that the hard way. You don't have to learn that the hard way. I lost four and a half million dollars in the, in the blink of an eye, in a click of a button. Wow. Uh, that you don't have to lose. And that was just in pending commissions that day. I had hundreds of millions that we would have closed the subsequent to that. But my point is this, I picked a fight with somebody out of idealism. I won, I beat them in court over and over and over again. Mm. Uh, but it didn't matter. Eventually, it cost me my career, not because I was wrong, because we weren't. Again, we beat them in court every time we went to court, but it wore me down to the point where I finally looked at my wife and I said, I'm either going to have a heart attack or they're going to run us out of money, one of the two. Mm. And neither one of them was good. So with her permission, I sold our company and I took three years off. And that's when I was, you know, three and a half years, I was flipping businesses and and all kinds of weird industries too, stuff that you'd be like, what? Like, I, you know, I flipped an HVAC company. Uh, it's actually more complicated. That was a restaurant equipment repair company. Uh, oh my gosh. I know. Right. Weird. Right. How do you, how, how do you go from real estate to that? Right. Um, but that one we, we took at, uh, 2.7 million a year later, it was at uh, 27 million in annual revenue. And, um, that oh one went pretty fast. And you want to talk about scale that scaling, right? That's right. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. When you 10 X in a single year, that's, that's scale. Um, but it's hard. Uh, and so long, and I say it's hard, it's not as hard as people think, but at, in long story short, in about 2014, a bunch of our clients started calling me up and saying, Hey, look, you need to get back into coaching. We want you to you know, teach us how to grow our business and work with our teams and all this stuff. And I thought to myself, well, look, one of the things that paid, that did well for me when I was young, I was in high school and getting into the real estate business was I made a decision that I wasn't going to listen to anybody that hadn't done what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, there's so many people ready to give you advice that have never been where you want to go. And I just, we're just real believers that if you want to climb to the top of Mount Everest, you need a guide who's been to the top of Mount Everest before. Mm. And so when I started, I, I said, okay, well, I'm only going to take advice from people that make six figures. And then when I got there, I said, okay, quarter of a million. And then it was a half million and then a million. And then it was, you know, there were so few people. And then it was just masterminding with all these really big producers around the country uh, and it paid paid dividends for me. So when we started Club Wolf back up in 2014, we said, we're only going to have coaches that have been where our clients want to go. And now we've got, we're number one in the team and brokerage space in real estate now. We're, we're what, about 82 coaches, I think, right now. Mm. Um, and they crush it. I mean, we've got coaches that do 3,000 transactions a year. Oh, my uh, gosh. I didn't realize and, you guys were that big. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize you guys were that big. That's incredible. Well, the, uh, I'm I'm so curious, like, you, okay, so you come back to coaching, but you're also, you're not just doing real estate coaching. You're doing, you said, even other businesses. Like, what type of other businesses are you coaching right now? Primarily real estate. But today, I was on the phone with a guy today about oil and gas. Uh, okay. You know, he's, he's in the oil and gas industry doing stuff that I've never done, but he's never run a business at that scale before. Doesn't know, you know, does that make sense? Yep. So, so his widget is different, but that's the interesting thing that people don't realize. Business is business. It's the widget that changes, right? It doesn't matter what your freaking widget is. You've got to learn how to run a business. You've got to learn how, and there's, there's three things. I don't care what business you're in. There's three things that every business has to do every single day or you're out of business. You, I, can I give them to you Yes, now? please. I'm like on the edge of my Super seat. simple. <laughs> Super simple. And again, doesn't matter what business it is. You've got to automate and delegate these three things. Number one is lead generation. Number two is lead follow-up. And number three is lead conversion. And those are con- coincidentally the highest paid activities in any business. So regardless of what your widget is, it's easy to hire people to do the widget. I can hire the technician. I can hire the administrative staff. I can hire the people to do those things. 
But where the money is made is in lead generation, lead follow-up, and lead conversion. And then it's in running the systems of the business, right? So we have to develop systems that are as automated as possible. And when we have those systems really well dialed in, our, our people run the systems, but the systems should be telling the people what they need to do. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, tell us what you mean about automating and then delegating something like lead generation. Let's just kind of go to that one specifically, because okay. I run a marketing team. We spend all day trying to generate leads. Talk about like, how do you then, is is that what that means? You're saying hire someone to do the lead generation for you, or you're saying build the systems where you don't have to be working on it every single day? Yes. <laughs> all of the above. So, so here's the myth about lead generation. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find a lead generation source that makes me tons of money. That's not what you should be after. What you, you know, anybody that's got one lead gen source is a recipe for disaster. When you buy and sell businesses, and this is what people that have bought and sold businesses understand and like hedge funds and, and PE firms understand that, that mom and pop business owners don't necessarily understand and that is if I if I'm going to buy a business and more than 25% of their business comes from a single source, I'm not interested. Like it, it's a it's a deal killer for mm. most PE firms at that point. They want to see diversification and lead flow. And so when we talk about automation, you know, as marketing guys, you know what funnels are, mm -hmm. right? So as an example, I might develop funnels, and there's lots of different ways leads can come in, right? I can run Facebook ads, I can run pay per click, I can do in real estate, I can do open houses, I can make cold calls, I can do FISBOs, right? There's a, there's literally over two thousand different lead sources just in real estate. Forget about all the other businesses, but just even in real estate, there's over two thousand. You don't need two thousand sources, but you do need to have more than a couple. Ideally, in, in the real estate industry, I want to have, if I want to make a solid net six-figure income, I need to have 10 to 15 lead sources. But my hunch is most of your audience wants more than that. Most of your audience probably wants a net seven-figure income, something mm -hmm. that's truly scalable. Well, if I want to be able to scale, I'm going to need at least 25 lead sources. So I'm going to, and, and I may have multiple different lead magnets, things that are attracting people to opt in. I'm going to have not only marketing, but sales as well. And marketing and sales are two different things. So let's talk about what the difference between those two things are. Marketing is putting out Facebook ads, putting out paper like ads, you know, running marketing or hiring someone else to run marketing that generates the lead. But once that lead comes in, I've got to involve the sales team. The sales team are the people that actually pick up the phone and talk to people. Okay. That's sales. So I have to have really robust marketing and I have to have really robust sales and I have to automate as much of both of these processes as possible. As an example, lead comes in. The worst thing that happens, this happens with most businesses, right? Where a lead comes in and it goes to some gal at the front desk who may or may not have a vested interest, may or may not be completely engaged and may or may not be compensated based on the success or failure of that lead. Yeah. Right. Mm. And, and probably isn't. And so that lead comes in and the guy at the front desk takes this lead. And this is businesses at large, right? It's, it's less so with real estate now. It's better than that in real estate now. But generally speaking, she doesn't know what to do with that lead. And in the real estate business, the same dynamic happens. It's just different. That lead generally comes into the rainmaker, the team, you know, the, the real estate agent. But because they're the one person show or, you know, they're the lone ranger or what we call the solopreneur agent, right? Like so low. Um, <laughs> my buddy Bob Allen calls him that. It's so funny. Um, but, but that's what they are, right? I mean, when you're by yourself, you're, you're down in the trenches, man. It's, it's not working out well for you and you're certainly not scalable. So what you have to do is you have to automate the process. So when that lead comes in, you have to automate both the act of it going into your CRM, which is mission critical. And you got to get into the weeds, right? I got to get into the minutia of it. It's got to go into a database where every single lead goes into the same database in the same way. And it follows the same system every step of the way so that, that for my sales team and for the client, the experience is exactly the same every single time. Mm. Then you've got to route that lead property properly. So once that lead comes in, who gets it? And that may be different depending on the lead source or the type of lead that it is. So I got to make sure it goes to the right person in the right way. And I got to make sure that the follow-up is on point. And that means, well, I could go, do you want me to keep going or do you want to ask questions? No, man, I love it. I, I actually was going to ask you like from a follow-up perspective, right? Because conversion is the name of the game, right? It's almost like we have right. too many leads in a way. <laughs> it's that people just can't convert their leads is the real problem. Uh, talk Amen. to us a little bit about the practicality of like, 
if I'm an agent today, like how often should I be touching somebody? What are you seeing from like, are you seeing text uh, respond better, emails? Are you seeing people should be on the phone within five minutes, like they say out there in some of the research studies? What are you seeing practically? Yes. I love that. <laughs> so let's start with this. First and foremost, I, I love where your head's at on this. Um, first and foremost, let's uh, understand that as an industry, real estate agents suck at lead generation. And the only thing they're worse at, and by the way, look, I, I can prove it. Why? Because Realtor.com and Zillow exist. Mm. If, if, if we were good at lead generation, they wouldn't exist. They wouldn't, ex- we wouldn't, they wouldn't make any money. Data. Yeah. What's that? They wouldn't be making any money. <laughs> That's right. And they're making billions, billions of dollars. Now, that being said, the only thing that we are worse at as an industry than lead generation is lead follow-up. And, and guess what? Realtor.com and Zillow figured that out. Enter Zillow Concierge and Op City, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that's exactly how those companies came yeah. in, in, into being. Now, I mean, why does Realtor.com pay $250 million for a company that does nothing but follow up with leads that real estate agents can't seem to follow up with on their own? Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. So that said... How do we follow up? Now, there's two phases to follow up that are both mission critical. So, guys, write this down. Everybody's got a pen. Write this down. Number one is speed to lead. You have to get to those leads quickly. And back nine years ago, the Harvard Business Review did a study about how fast we needed to get to our leads. And that's where the five-minute mark comes from. That's why everybody keeps talking about five minutes. They're, they're, five, they're nine years ago. Okay, uh, And nine years ago, HBR figured out that if you wait beyond five minutes to follow up with a lead, your chances of connecting with that lead drop by 900%. 900%. And that was nine years ago. Right? And attention spans have, have collapsed even, even more now. Big time. Well, and the number of people following up has changed too. Watch this. In real estate last year, 85, there, was, there was 85 million leads in real estate last year. Guess how many sales there were? Hmm. I feel like I should know this answer. Like eight and a half million. <laughs> and there was 85 million leads. And it, so there's 10 times the number of leads wow. as there are transactions. So here's what's happening. Everybody's like, oh, but Michael, I get exclusive leads. No, you don't. There's no such thing. I don't care if they just went to your website and signed up on your website. They also went to Realtor.com. They also went to Zillow. They also went right. to somebody else's website. And half these people sold the lead to five other people. So you're competing with a lot more people than you realize mm. every time. In fact, we did a study and kind of an informal study. I took one of our ISAs that works for one of the one of our coaching clients down in San Diego. This guy's name was Benson. And I told him, I said, every single lead that comes in, I don't want you to look it up. I want you to hit send on your phone and call it. And then you can look it up so that while it's ringing. I, my goal was I wanted him on the phone with people every, in that. the first 30 seconds every time. Yeah. So he did it and he was good at it. And he came back two years later, excuse me, two weeks later, we had a conversation about it. And I asked him, I said, so how did it go? And it went great. I got on the phone with virtually all of them the first 30 seconds, or at least I dialed in the first 30. The ones I got a hold of, the conversations were great. I set lots of appointments. And I asked him, I said, how many other agents contacted that person while you were on the phone with them? And he says, you know, it's funny you asked. He said, virtually every time it was between four and five other agents in the first five minutes. Wow. That's unreal. That it's just there's so much noise. There's so much competition. There's so much noise. Uh, so speed to lead. That's your first. What's the second kind of tip that will set you apart to kind of cut through so you that? Get your, yeah, super simple. For first of all, get your speed to lead down below thirty seconds. Number one buyer of Realtor.com leads in the country buys. He'll buy twelve million dollars worth of Realtor.com leads this year. His name's Robert Slack. You probably know him. Uh, so Robert will spend 12 million on realtor.com leads for his 456 agents. He's got his speed lead down to 16 seconds. That's what you're competing with out there. Um, mm. so that said, let's us right. I've got a new goal. And it's not yeah, enough. <laughs> I'm thinking that? of our, I'm thinking Michael of our own sales team, right? I have a yeah. little over a hundred uh, people on the phones and I'm thinking of our own and we don't get to people within 30 seconds. Like we've strived to try to do the five minute thing. It's hard. Like anybody listening to this yeah. in the audience, like you really have to be good at your systems, your processing of That's leads, right. all that stuff. You have to be really good. It's a hard thing. And I'm thinking of ourselves of going, yeah, yeah we, we've got to get down to 16 seconds. What are we doing? That's well, and that, but that's the thing. Now think about this. If you want to increase conversion, start by increasing or, or decreasing your speed to lead, you know, so your time that it takes to get to that lead, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can get it down into that 16 to 30 second range, 
you'll see your conversion numbers increase dramatically. That said, let's talk about follow-up now. So we got speed to lead. Then we have tenacity and method of follow-up. Okay. So this is really important. So how tenaciously should I follow up? So we have something called the club wealth rule of three. It's not very scientific, but a freak. It's like Novocaine. Give it time. It always works. <laughs> right? right. It just, it just does. Uh, to quote my friend, Denzel Washington, uh, <laughs> that said, it's like the beer, right? So here's the point. If you get a lead today that comes in, there's a follow-up system you need to follow. There's six different ways you need to follow up with that person. So grab a pen, write these down. Super simple. First thing is I'm going to call them. Then I'm going to email, text message, video email, video text message. And my favorite is Facebook stalk them. Right? <laughs> now, I always tell people stalking used to be a three to five year sentence. Now it's a six figure income. So you, you got to stalk people. Right? So we got to quote that Ariel, put the, put a marker on that for the show. We got to <laughs> run that as a clip. <laughs> Dude, I can just see it now. You're going to put jail bars yeah, in yeah. there. So, but the reality is it's true. You're going to have to become a stalker at some level. You got for a number of reasons, right? One, because you got to understand your prospect. Number two, because you got to understand how and where they want to connect with you. And we don't mm -hmm. know that until we reach out to them on all these different methods. Now, there, here's the key. Here's how frequently I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it three times a day for the first three days, three times a week for the next three weeks, three times a month for the next three months. Hmm. Now, right now, people that are listening to this are like, this guy is outside his freaking mind. He's a psychopath. What is he talking about? Right? But here's the thing. The reality is you will lose far more transactions due to poor follow-up or lack of follow-up than you ever will due to over-following up all hmm. day long and twice and time. Guarantee it. Now, here's the thing. If I get a hold of him the first day, am I really going to call him two more times that day? <laughs> no. Use your common sense. Of course not. Uh, and if they tell me, hey, we're ready in six months, am I going to call them three times a day tomorrow and three times a day the next? No, of course not. I'm going to, if I'm going to take that six months, I'm going to cut it in half and that's when I'm going to follow up with them. I will still drip value on them. However, mm -hmm. I'm going to retarget the crap out of them, right? So pixeling your audience and retargeting them on Facebook and Google with both, not just one or the other, you got to do both. Retargeting them will really move the needle for you, especially if they're out a little further. So you want to retarget them, not with ads, not with, with stuff designed to get them to do business with you, but just with value. Mm -hmm. Show them that you're going to bring them a ton of value long before you do business with them. Here's what I liken it unto. Uh, either one of you guys ever been on a blind date? I have not. No. I, have, I haven't either, man. You're killing me. Come I on, good looking guys. Yeah. You guys never been on a blind date, really? <laughs> I haven't, man. I really haven't. Wow. Okay. Well, for those All people my listening who have. Yeah, that's a bad I, I guarantee there are people watching this and listening to this that have been on a blind date. Here's what happens on a blind date. Does, do, you, do you think that the, the guy goes up to the door knocks on the door? She answers it and he dives right in for a kiss. <laughs> Heck no. First you take her to dinner. You bring her flowers. You take her to a movie. You bring her value, right? Maybe if you're lucky and you've brought her enough value, maybe you'll maybe get to hold her hand by the end of the night, but you're certainly not going for that kiss. The second you meet her, right? Here's the problem. Most real estate agents and business owners in general, guess what they're doing? They're trying to make out with the girl on the front porch before they even take her to dinner. You guys, you got to stop. That's a that golden crap. nugget, ladies and gentlemen, right there. That's a freaking golden nugget. <laughs> right? But that's what they're doing. They're like, let me, let me just dive right in. No, that's creepy. Don't be that guy. Instead, we got to bring them value. I'll give you a perfect example. After lead follow-up, and so we got lead generation and lead follow-up. The next thing that's really important is lead conversion, right? None of this matters if we don't convert the lead. You know who knows more about lead conversion than real estate agents and most business people? Who? I know you're thinking it. It's drug dealers. You're right. It's drug dealers, <laughs> right? I know you're thinking that. So check this out. Why did drug dealers, what do drug dealers know that most business owners, and by the way, I've never they, done they drugs. Got, so they they got to go give a little bit, man. They got to give a little bit for free. Gotta Dude, you nailed it. Write that down, you guys. First one's free, minute, and you got to pay. Josh is questioning How his state you know pay this? pal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a drug dealer either. I have not done it. First one, but it's free. so true. They give them a taste of the product, and they get them hooked on that product, right? Yeah. And then they got to have it. Watch this. You're a real estate agent. What's your product? Your service. No, it's not your service. The house. It's not the house. You. It's you. You're <laughs> the product, right? 
It's you, 100%. And so, but here's what happens. Most real estate agents, they get, a, you know, they get on the phone with a potential buyer. The first thing they say is, well, hey, before I can show you the house, I got to get you pre-approved. Yep. Approved, right? That is the worst possible thing you can do. Talk about sales prevention 101. Go teach classes at college because I guarantee you're never making more than that professor. Stop with that crap. It's terrible, right? So what do you do? You got to give them the first one free. We're in a service industry and yet we're failing to serve people. We, we want to make out with them on the front porch. Stop it. They want to see the house. Take them to see the house because I guarantee that you guys and everybody listening to the show right now I guarantee you sell better face to face than you do over the phone. True mm. or false? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent Yep. 100%. So get face to face with them. Give them a chance to taste your product. No, don't go creepy on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, give them a chance to <laughs> just experience the product, right? They need to get to know you, build some rapport. When you do that, you've got a shot at maybe getting their business but you've got to give value first. And so many people in this industry have forgotten how to do that because they got burned once or because somebody didn't qualify. Who freaking cares? If they don't qualify, at least you've got a referral source. Mm. So that being said, how do I handle that lead when it comes in? Should we address that? Yes, man. This is awesome. This is a huge one. This is big. So check this out. I get that lead. I call it right away. What do I do if they don't answer the phone? What's the key here? Do you leave a, a voicemail? And that's what most agents would do. And I'll tell you what, if you were on my team and you did that, I would smack you. You would be coffees for closers. You'd be thirsty for weeks. I tell you right now. So <laughs> here's the deal. Here's why. Here's why. Because if, if you leave a message now, you, they know who you are. Yeah. There's no reason for There's them to no talk to you. There's no curiosity anymore. <laughs> that's exactly right. You've removed the curiosity factor. So let me give you a technique that will get you on the phone with them 83% of the time. 83% of the time, it's crazy, it works so well. So here's what you do. You're gonna call that lead, if they don't answer, hang up the phone, don't leave a message. And do what's called a double dial, write that down, double dial. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Right our callers in our call center call it the sneak sneak. They'll call and then they, and they'll, they won't leave a message and then they call back. <laughs> And I tell you what, I'm going to give you something. I'll bet your, your call center guys aren't doing this yet, but I guarantee that when you hear what I'm about to share with you, you're going to implement this with your call center and you're going to call me. I'm expecting a call from you. Love it. And I want to hear you say, dude, you lit my call center on fire. They are crushing <laughs> me with this. So here it is. So the second time you call, you don't leave a message either. If they don't answer, you hang up the phone and then you're going to send them a text message, three words. And these three words are going to get their curiosity, especially if they have children. Now, I want you to put yourself in the mind of someone that has kids. They receive a phone call from a number they don't recognize. They don't, the person doesn't leave a message. They get another phone call, no message. Then they get a text message that says, is this Susie or whatever name they registered on your website with? <laughs> yep. What's going through Susie's mind right now? Oh my gosh, one of my kids is either in jail or in the hospital, depending on which kid it is. Yeah, it was the right? freaking drug dealers. It was the drug That's dealers. A, it's, the, it's the freaking <laughs> drug dealers, exactly, right? And so now she's curious. Now you've got her attention, right? It's like Leo DiCaprio, you know, you, you had my curiosity, now you've got my attention. So <laughs> now here's what's going to happen. When she, she's going to almost every time, she, almost every time she's going to respond with the following words. Yes. Who's this? Who is this? Yeah right? Don't freaking tell her. Okay. <laughs> the next text message you're going to send her, it's three words and it will get her on the phone with you virtually every time. You ready for it? Yep. Will you test it out, Luke? Yep. We'll test it out, man. No brainer. I'm already taking this in. <laughs> Dude, here you go. Calling you now. Yeah. That's so good. That's, that's so all good. you do. <laughs> Calling you now. Dude, Dude, we are 100%. That's what a cop or a nurse would say, right? Calling you now. And right now she's panicking. Susie's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And she'll pick up the phone and she may be a little startled. And I, look, never in there did we mislead her. We didn't say anything inappropriate. We didn't tell her we were something we weren't. Not None of that, right? We just simply called twice. She didn't answer. We didn't leave a message. We sent her a text message saying, hey, is this Susie? She said, yes, it is. Who's this? I said, calling you now. And all of a sudden I've got her on the phone. 83% of the time. That's it's huge. Amazing. And yeah, huge. I mean, and you, and you have value you're offering them. It is that important. 
I'm calling you now. It's that important. Yeah. I got to get you on the phone. I can help you. I can offer value to you. You want the best script for what, for, for how to make sure that she never, she's never upset with you and she yeah. doesn't see you as a salesperson. Watch this. This is how you position yourself. And this positioning is important. You guys, if you want to scale a business, you have to teach your team how to position themselves properly. All right. So what you don't want is you don't want what most agents do, right? Most agents, when they follow up with somebody at, you know, are you ready to buy yet? Are you ready to sell? Or even worse, when they call their sphere of influence, they use the cheesiest freaking script that has absolutely been a cancer in this industry since it came over from Ireland. I can, I can hear it now. Oh, by the way, if you were thinking about buying or selling oh, a home man. or had a friend or family member who shots has the yeah, real deal you refer them to. What's that? It's a shots fired. Shots baby. fired. We're going to have Dude. to have him on the show. You, maybe, I, and look, I dude, love maybe, Brian. He was my coach. For, maybe you could introduce us <laughs> to him. We've actually uh, tried to get Brian on the show. So this uh, maybe this will help us get him on the show. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I love Brian. I no, think he's a I great know. guy. I think it's all but great. that script is so self-serving. It's mm. terrible, mm. right? Instead, here's the script. I want to position myself as a, as a person who cares, a servant who cares, mm. not as a salesperson who just wants to sell him on something, but as a person who cares. Here's all you have to say. Hey, hey, Josh, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't dropping the ball on my end. And what's Josh going to say every time? Or what's, what's Susie in this case going to say every time? She's going to say, oh, no. oh, no, no, no. It's not you, Josh. It's me. It's like that girl in high school, right, guys? Right, right. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, you yeah. know. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you may not have been on a blind date, but you've heard that one before. Come on. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, painful. No, so, that's awesome. But do you see the difference there though? Do you see how it's disarming and all of a sudden they're on your side? No, I love and that. Yeah. Instead of oh, you they're trying to cheat yeah. them, you've attracted them. The curiosity too is through the roof at that point. Mm -hmm. It's it, I mean, yeah. it's really, it's really that, oh my gosh, this person has something in incredible that I've got to hear. Yeah. And I have to back up because um we have found in our own stats, right? So we make thousands of calls a day. Right. And we just were with our BI team a couple of weeks ago. And if we call two to three times in the same day, every single day, up to nine calls, our closing rate is 46% of a SAMP request. Mm -hmm. If we push out for 32 hours, it dropped down to 16%. If you do a call and then push it out for 32 hours to, or, or even 16 hours, it dropped down, I think, into the 20s. But what you're saying about the three, it's crazy. Like we saw it in the data for our own call center. It's like, you feel like you might, you know, you're coming across, oh, I might be harassing this pe person. No, you're actually doing them a service because you're actually going to provide for them what they're actually requested and what they are actually looking for. So I love that. They I just don't wanted to see back it as up. pressure. If, if you're nice when you talk to them, if you're, if, you're, if you're a human being, when you have the conversation with them, they don't see it as pressure. Right. Frankly, they got other things going on in their life. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about taking their kids to school or to, well, maybe not now. They're thinking about, you know, putting their mask on or whatever the heck they're thinking about. Right. But it's not you. So if you don't do this, you're forgotten yeah. instantly. Oh, man. I've always framed it up for people in the CAR acronym. When I teach my sales callers, I say, first, they're curious. Then they might be a little annoyed. And this is where most salespeople give up. Because they're like, oh, I don't want to call this person too many times. I don't want to reach out to them again. And then they go into this respect phase. Sometimes they enter into the resentment phase if you want to double the R's. But it's like <laughs> they go from curious, annoyed to respect because they're like, Luke, your follow-up is so impressive. I'm so glad you stayed on me. I really appreciate that. I really wanted to do this. But most salespeople give up in the annoyance phase because they feel like, oh, I'm overbearing. Pain, and yeah. that's why they lose. And that's why most salespeople don't make a lot of money. I, I love that, man. Yeah. I think you're spot on. All right. So get past that annoyance stage without destroying the relationship. Yes. Lay it on it. Yep. There's an acronym, bro, B-R-O-T, building relationships on trust, right? So what we do is we have to build that relationship. We have to build rapport with them. We have to get into rapport, which means we have to be genuinely curious. We have to practice active listening and be genuinely curious about who they are and what's going on in their lives. Perfect example. One of my team members was on a call in our call center. We have a call center too. And, and uh, one of my guys in the call center was on the phone with this wonderful agent. And uh, he got on her Facebook and he noticed that she had posted about this macaroni and cheese that she had made. And he, and it had the little bread crumbs on it. It was just, it looked like a restaurant had made it. And so what does he do? She's in the annoyance phase, right? right when, when he finally gets a hold of her and she, she's kind of annoying. He says, Hey, listen, Susie, listen, 
is did you really make I'm, I'm on your I don't, not to be creepy but this. I'm on your Facebook page did you actually really make that mac and cheese because that looks really yummy why yes I did <laughs> I mean she just changed and so he says listen now I'm just gonna tell you this yeah at some point I mean I'm never gonna press you but you and I both know at some point we're gonna be working together and when we are I'm gonna talk you into sending me some of that mac and cheese because man that looks really I love mac and cheese and all of a sudden Throughout the call, he's dropping the mac and cheese bomb. And let me just tell you, she signed up for coaching that day. That is so great, man. Yeah. The, the relationship building, Flattery the rapport works, building yeah. there. Oh, yeah. That's so phenomenal. It's all about connecting. I still have people. yet to see the mac and cheese, though. People. We're bummed about that. Uh, she has not yeah. sent us any. I'm <laughs> Come on, wrong. Susie. Susie, if you're listening. Man, this has been... I mean, just so incredible. I could keep talking. This is going to, to be interview one of many yeah, I feel, I, I, with I, Michael. Yeah, I want to talk to you for hours, man. Your wealth of knowledge. I, I've got to ask you this because Josh and I are self, you know, kind of we're junkies for self-development and trying to figure out. There, we Everybody knows there's no magic formula, but I do believe success leaves clues, as Tony Robbins would teach. And so I'm curious in your life, what are the routines that you have implemented in your life personally and maybe business-wise that you look back and go, these routines have really helped me be successful. I love you guys. Can I just tell you, like, we are so aligned. So first of all, goals suck. <laughs> Habits rule, all right? Like, forget freaking goals. I'm so tired of people setting these big freaking goals and they do nothing to change their habits. Mm. If you want to accomplish anything in this world, change your freaking habits. Watch this. If I look at your schedule from last week and I know the average sales price in your market, I could probably guess what your income is going to be next year. Mm. Pretty crazy, right? With, with reasonable accuracy. Um, and so I can certainly tell you if you're going to be in six figures or not, for sure. Mm. Uh, and, and for sure, I can tell you if you're going to be in seven figures. So the question that's asked is, what, what have I changed? What have I done with my daily routine? And it's first and foremost, get your butt up early. Get out of freaking bed and quit with this. I'm going to start my day at the crack of 10, right? Like that is, it kills me about this industry. Next, when you show up to the office or like when I say early, if you're not in your office by 7.30 in the morning, something's wrong. Like get up and act like you want to make money, right? Mm. And, and then <clears throat> watch this. Your dress and your language should support your message. Mm right? Don't show up in freaking juicy, super juicy sweatpants, right? I, I see this all the time. Like, are you kidding Apple me? bottom jeans? What about apple bottom jeans? <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't even get me started. So I don't even know what that know, is. What's well, that the song, part. that rap song or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the habits are, you know, first of all, just starting your day early and then just Brian Tracy, I, you guys probably know who Brian Tracy is yep. super smart guy. Good guy. Um, yeah, and I'll, so one, next time we do an interview, ask me about my lunch with Brian. I'll tell you it, like cool stuff, good stuff about the family. Um, but one of the things that I learned from Brian is, you know, and many people have learned this from him, you've got to eat the frog, right? So do the hard thing first. Mm -hmm. Whatever, and for most people that's lead generation, if you're still in that phase of chasing business, you haven't quite got to attracting business yet, then you got to make the calls lead generation early in the morning, do it first thing. Stop with the check. And, and here's another thing. Don't check your email, voice messages, Facebook, social media of any kind until afternoon. If you're struggling with distraction, get rid of those things. Turn all the notifications off on your phone. None of that stuff. Here's the problem. None of that stuff should happen before noon. But here's the real problem. This phone, this thing right here, that's for my benefit, not yours. Right? Yeah. I got this to make me more efficient, not so anybody that wants to can get a hold of me whenever they want. Love that. It, it's critical. And so many people use that as, as a distraction. They allow that to uh, enable other people to take them off of their game at a yep. moment's notice. Yep. It, th if you just did those things, life will change. Your, your business will change dramatically, but you've got to, and I don't care if you, I, look, we all have ADD, right? Every great salesperson probably has ADD, <laughs> right? So you've got to learn to control it. You've got to learn to harness that and, and block out those distractions. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Cool. Yeah. That's so good. All right, man. Last question for you. Don't get emotional on us. Oh, no, I know where you're going. This is the hook. Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah. I'm on the gong show. Yeah, you're about to bang the gong. <laughs> don't shed a tear, but knowing what you know now, right? Looking about all your success, all the businesses you flipped, the people you've coached, what would you go back and tell younger Michael, the high school age kid, the, the college age kid, what, what type of advice would you give that kid? 
man up. There's no freaking participation medals. Get your butt to work and make it happen. <laughs> Let's do it, baby. <laughs> I love that. No, that's true. Kind of short and suck sweet it up, Nancy. To the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it hard up, world out there. Get ready. Yep. yep. Get off the dime, princess, and get to work because nobody else is doing it for you. That's yeah, amazing. Dude. That's so good. Michael, man, this has been such an amazing interview. Thanks so much for coming on. Before we uh, get out of here, tell people how they can connect with you or if there's anything that you wanted to plug. Uh, I would say go to, there's two, there's two ways in particular, go to our website, obviously clubwealth.com. Uh, those of you that are on Facebook, and if you're not on Facebook, check your pulse. Something's wrong. You may be dead. Um, <laughs> but I would suggest go to and join our Facebook group. It's uh, oh, we awesome. got a ton of wicked, intelligent business people in there. Um, it's, you just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash club wealth, nice. uh, get in there, join that group. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and ask a lot of questions and listen, want you to know, read the stuff, learn from people. Um, and I'll ask, I ask questions in there all the time just to poke the bear, so to speak. Uh, you know, I'll just, I'll ask just a, a question Stir just that I know is going to piss half the people <laughs> off. What's that? Stir the pot a little bit. I do. I totally do. I, I always stir the pot in there. Because it gets the conversation going. I know if I've got three, 400 people commenting on a, on a question I ask, I've stirred the pot well. <laughs> and that's good because it gets the conversation happening that you need to hear. Um, that said, do you want me to give those lead sources away? Do you want me to give them a chance to get those? That oh, would be amazing, yeah, man. We appreciate do. that. Yeah. We'll include it okay, in the, so we have, we'll include all the links in the show notes of the podcast as well, but go ahead. Okay. Well, we have, we have 109 lead sources we recommend to our clients. Um, and I'll, look, most of these don't cost anything, or at least you don't have to pay up front for them. You only pay on a, you know, a referral fee afterwards or whatever. Um, there's what I'll do is the, uh, for those that are listening to this recorded, I'll give you 17 of our, of our top 109. For those of you that are watching this live, I'll give you 31. If you'll do, if you do this right now, I'll give you 31 lead sources. Um, text, I'm going to have you send the, the words club wealth, text that to, and just grab your phone. Just do it right now. Send a text message to 727 727- 287-5993. Again, it's 727-287-5993. And then text the words, two words, club, oops, sorry, club wealth. Uh, I'm not, I would, I'd make a terrible weather caster, right? I'm like, uh, yeah. Anyway, text the words club wealth to that number uh, and uh, we'll send you those lead sources. But, and here's the thing, don't try and implement them all at once. Just do one, automate yes. it, delegate yes. whatever else you can, and then do the next one. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. The best system, the best lead source, the best anything to use is the one that you will actually use. So take action on that today. Thanks again for being here, Michael. Thank you so much for listening to dive deeper into this episode. And to get the video, you can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com. And if you're interested in supporting the show and we really appreciate it, there are two ways we ask you to do that. First way is to head on over to iTunes, throw us a five-star rating and leave a comment. Our most recent review is short and sweet. Jenny SR via Apple Podcasts says, great podcast, five stars. Enjoy this. Always great info. So super <laughs> short, super sweet, but we really appreciate the support there, Jenny. And the best way to help out the show is to tell a friend and share this episode on your social media. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us directly at podcast at remindermedia.com. You can also find us on Instagram and on Facebook. We are at Stay Paid Podcast on both of those. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acre, and I will tell you, I'm going to make a bold claim here. I think this Uh-oh. is going to be our top podcast. Top? Top podcast. I'm not just saying that either. I, I want you guys to go back and listen to this podcast. I'm, I'm really blown away. Like, I've been excited to have you on the show, but there are so many golden nuggets throughout. I couldn't even, I didn't even want to interrupt and say golden nugget, golden nugget, golden nugget. But there's so many. I'd encourage you to go back and listen to it multiple times. Here's the action item, though, I want to leave you with that I believe you can implement right away. And it's the principle of speed to lead. Mm. I believe that is something that you can tomorrow turn on and go, any leads that come in, I will get to them. And you just heard, I mean, that example of $12 million that guy's spending on lead generation from Realtor.com and his speed to lead is 16 seconds. So see if you can beat that. See if you can beat 16 seconds. Remember this, Josh and I have served in over 140 industries and worked with different people in over 140 different industries. The difference between top producers and mediocre producers is simple. Top producers take action. Take action on that today. 